Next, we're going to go over hiding and locking objects. So when you select artwork, sometimes it's difficult to get to the pieces that you want without accidentally selecting other pieces or bumping them around. So there are times that we want to lock something down to prevent that from happening. So I want you all to move to Artboard 1. So you can choose the Artboard selector down here, or you can use it in the Properties panel. Either way, get to Artboard 1 and make sure it fits in your window. So Command 0. And then from there, we're going to use our Selection tool, and we're going to click to select the background, or this blue box. And I want to show you what happens when we start moving it. Do you see how just that piece of artwork, that one blue layer, moved? Um, do an undo, Command Z. Um, what if we want to lock that down so that we can move or get to other pieces? It's very simple to do that. Once you have it selected, like we do right now with the bounding box around it, we are going to go up to the Object menu and choose Lock. And lock what? We want to lock our selection. Command 2 is the shortcut for that. Notice our bounding box went away, but now if we try to select that and move it, we can't. It's locked. Um, I'm going to show you something. We're going to get to layers in a chapter or two, but over in the layers panel over here, if we twirl this open, we would actually see that we have a lock on this background. And other some other things are locked as well, but this rectangle is locked. I'm going to go back to the Properties panel and come back over here. So now we know that we can't accidentally select this. Even if we make a marquee that is over top of this blue part, it won't select it. And I want you to take the, mark, uh, the Selection tool and make a marquee selection of the whole fox's face. So go top to bottom all the way through. And you should see a blue outline around all these different pieces. And I also want to point out to you and always remind you to be thinking about shapes when you work in Illustrator. So if we're going to cut construction paper shapes to make this, what we're going to do is we're going to cut a big orange one that is this whole shape right here. It goes here, up around the cheek, around the ear. That's the piece of orange. Then we're going to cut out darker orange pieces like this and lay them on top. We're not going to cut a hole in this light orange piece and then try to maneuver the perfectly cut dark orange into it. That's way too much work. We're just going to stack our shapes. Then we're going to make a bunch of these triangle-like things. And instead of strategically snuggling them up to the edge of the ear, we're just going to place them under this piece of construction paper. So this is the lowest layer. They're way at the bottom on both sides. Then we're going to take a piece of white that fits over this part, and we're going to lay that on top. We're going to take some black circles to make the eye. We're going to cut out this shape of white, and then we're going to cut out a triangle of black again and place that on top. So think about it that way when you are building things in Illustrator. It's all about a stacking game and putting shapes under and on top of each other. So with this piece, I told you about the outline view last chapter, so command letter Y. Here are all of these paths and their anchor points, and we can see everything is selected. We have the eyes, the nose, this white part, whatever. Command Y takes us back to our normal view, but you notice that all of these pieces are currently selected right now. What we want to do is remove these two eye pieces from our selection. So that blue line that is around them, we want to deselect them. And to do that, we're just going to hold down our shift key and we're going to click on this eye until that goes away. And then we're going to shift and click on this eye until it goes away also. And if you want to confirm that in outline view, command Y, you'll notice that we don't have blue anchor points or bounding boxes. We've deselected these right now. Command Y will bring you back into this view. And what we want to do is hide everything that we've selected. So basically we're going to hide the entire face except for those two eyes. So we're going to come up to Object, Hide, and this time we're going to hide the selection, which is all these random pieces. 
and notice they're hidden. They're locked out of our view and all we see are the two eyeballs. They're temporarily hidden. So that's one way of um, getting down to just certain parts that you want to work with. Another way that we can select parts to work with is we can use the Select Similar um, tool or menu command. And we're going to fit all of our artboards in our window right now. So Command Option 0 or Alt Control 0 on a PC. And with our selection tool, the black arrow, we're going to click on one of these pieces of bamboo on artboard number two. We're going to select it. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. But what this is, actually I'm going to click away from it right now. What this is, is a shape that is filled with a light green and it has a darker green stroke on it. So if I click on that to select that piece of bamboo, and I now want to get all of these pieces of bamboo on this artboard without shift clicking them all, which you know you could do that, but if there's 50 of them on here, you certainly don't want to do that. You want to work smarter. So what you do is you choose select, and then you're going to choose same, and then how do we want to pick it by? We can pick it by blending mode, something that has the same stroke and fill, the same opacity, the same stroke weight, whatever the case may be. We are going to choose give me everything that has the same stroke color as this. And by doing that, it selected all of these pieces, including this little one down here. Um, just as a reminder, the fill is the color on the inside, and the stroke is the color on the outline of it, and how big that outline is, you can control as well. So we told it to pick everything that has a stroke color the same as that one, and that's this color green, and it picked all these pieces and put a bounding box around them. Um, if you know that you may need to reselect a series of objects again, like we just did with the bamboo, you can always save a selection. And by doing that, you give it a name. And then when you come back to that same thing and want to work on it again, the save selection will automatically give you the same bounding box. You won't have to go and do it all over again. So under the select menu, we are going to choose save this selection. And it's going to ask us for a name. And I encourage you to always use logical names. That's selection one. So I'm just going to call this bamboo and say OK. Later on, if we want, if we've clicked away, which you can do right now, and then we say, oh shoot, I really want all those bamboos selected again. All we have to do is come up to our select menu and this save selection is right here at the bottom. Click on it and it will automatically reselect that for you. So that's really helpful. All right, once you've done that, just click away to deselect it. As long as you click in an area that doesn't have something else going on and you see that nothing is selected on your artboard and it says so up here in the properties, we're good to go. So another way of selecting objects is using outline mode. So by default, Illustrator is going to show you artwork with all of its attributes showing, so the fill and the stroke color. And sometimes this does get hard to find what you're looking for, so going into outline mode can help. So let's first go back to Object, and then we're going to do a Show All. So everything that we've previously hidden is now going to come back, which includes the fox's face. And then click away to deselect everything. Make sure that you have no selection. And then we're going to go into the Outline mode, which is Command Letter Y. And here's where we see all of the um, anchor points and lines without color and fill applied to them. Um, we're going to look at the eyes of the fox, and right now, I can't, there's no way for me to select this by just clicking in the middle like it would have worked if the fill was there. So to select something in outline mode, you have to be on the actual path or the edge of it to select it. So you notice I'm getting no options right here. Let me zoom in on that. Move over. So when I'm close to the center of the eye, I'm not getting any option. I have to actually get to the path for it to light up. So I'm going to select that path. And I'm going to want to select the other one. So I'm going to hold down Shift and do the same. 
Another thing I could have done was I could have marqueed over these to select them both as well. Everything else is still locked behind it. Now that we have these two eyes um, selected, we're going to use our arrow key on the keyboard just to move them up a little bit higher. No specific amount, but we're just pushing them up. And then I want you to go back into the regular view, which is Command Y, and zoom out. And you can see that we basically move those eyes up or down. I'm just using the arrow keys on my keyboard to do that. A lot of times when you have different shapes stacked up, maybe the thing that you're trying to get to is below another piece and you can't get to it easily without going into outline mode, so that can be very helpful.